Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Evan Wert. I'm the community of the data schools. With me, there is also Karen Herbane and Anna Alexander from CDH. I'm just going to introduce Anne in, in a minute more as well. But well, welcome to this to this session, this uh, information session for the online cultural heritage data school that we're going to to have uh, in Cambridge in digital humanities from the sixth to the 14th November, uh, 2023. So um, as I said, I am going to just give a few, uh, like a brief introduction of the data school. And uh, later on, Anne is going to, to just talk about some of the, some of the modules that we're going to, to, to have for this iteration, and also going to talk about applications. And then we're going to go for the Q&A uh your questions let me just share my, my screen briefly i hope everyone everyone can see my screen so okay there's a qr code over there in case you, you you want to you want to use it it's going to appear later on also for those who are going to watch this video on demand i suppose it's going to be helpful to have that qr code over there just to the link where you can know more about about this online cultural heritage state school. So this is pretty much the structure that we're going to follow in the next maybe 30 to 40 minutes, right? In this Q&A, this information session, introduction, presentation of the content, description of the modules, a little bit of application, and then your questions, right? And then we wrap it up. So I just want to, to, to talk about the principles of the data schools in general at CDH. Really, our aim is to, to facilitate access to, to tools and methods for digital, digital data collection, for analysis, for reporting as well. We want to foster the development of ethical practices in digital research, which is not restricted to, restricted to the academia, by the way. As you probably know, we, we, we do reach out to people in Colder heritage institutions and people doing social research, uh, some social impact work as well. And um, finally, the third objective is to encourage dialogue between academia, civil society, uh, the public sector, and industry uh, about social, ethical, and policy implications of digital research methods. So that's kind of you know the the objectives, and also I suppose some principles that are embedded into those objectives into what we do at CDH with the data schools. And we've been done, we've been doing it since 2019 now. Now, the cultural, the cultural heritage data school is just one type of school that we have. This one is specifically aimed at people who are part of uh, the glam sector or people who are doing some research in the academia as well that has to do with cultural heritage with digital humanities as well, right? So um, this online program is led by CDH at the University of Cambridge. Uh, we provide methods, technical foundations and tools to create and visualize and analyze digital archives and collections. And um, yeah, just to reiterate, right? This is an online intensive teaching program aiming to bring together participants from the glam sector, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums and academia right, as well. NGOs uh, sometimes are also joining this program to explore the methods used to create, visualize, and analyze digital archives and collections. So that's specifically for this data school that we're going to have uh, online in November. And hopefully some of you are uh, thinking of applying. Now, breaking it down a little bit more to who we expect to be applying is professionals, people who are actually working in, in, in the glam sector, right, in galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, in the wider cultural heritage sector, volunteers in NGO uh, groups, in community projects, right, that has to do, that has some relation with cultural heritage. Uh, we also expect uh, researchers um, who are engaging with the cultural heritage sector, so they may be researching collections or archives, theoretically or very practically too. And so we, we welcome them too. And uh, we do accept, we are looking also for students 
um, students who are doing a, a, an undergraduate degree or maybe a postgraduate degree um, are welcome. But we will prioritize those who will have some sort of engagement with the sector already, right? Because we, we do want to, as it were, come out of, of academia and foster this um, this this dialogue between academia and, uh, and, and professionals and the industry. Uh, so we, we, we're going to prioritize those, those students who, who have that connection over there. So that's about who should apply. Now, we, we are keen to see applications from around the world. Um, perhaps this, this cultural heritage data school is the one that is, uh, is, is kind of uh, better or it, it provides a, uh, more facilities for people in the global south, people in other parts of the world to join us without all the, the expenses of coming all the way to, to an in-person edition in Cambridge. But yeah, we, we do need you to, 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 to have the, the time to, to join us, right? So you, you need to be able to participate in live sessions uh, they're going to take place between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, this is uh, GMT. This is going to be GMT. Um, so, you know, you, you need to just do the calculations over there for, for your uh, for your time, wherever you are from. But we encourage applications from all over the world. And um, for people who are in, based in the Global South or those who are working, for institutions that are underfunded or they belong to historically marginalized and oppressed social groups, uh, where offerings also some, some opportunities to join. Uh, there are concessions. I'm going to explain that a little bit later. And there are also bursaries. A concession is a reduced price. A bursary is no fee for those who are going to be applying for bursaries, but we have limited, limited places for those. Which is actually the next point, right? So the fees of, of, of this online iteration, um, the price is 245 per person. That's for a standard, a standard ticket. We did have some early bird tickets at a reduced price of uh, 195, but those are gone um, because the, 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 the due date or you know the deadline for that was 3rd September, but we still have uh, places for concessions, right? So it's a, a discounted price of 75. So those who, who qualify as a standard are those who belong to organizations with paid staff, um, large organizations mainly. Um, but if you belong to an organization, um, you know, the public, uh, the private sector, um, but your organization is an organization that is, um, well, with limited funding or you have very limited uh, number of paid staff, you can apply for, for the concession. Um, just explaining further, the concessionary places are for those who are part of um, underfunded, unfunded projects, or those who are uh, um, living in the global south, those who can demonstrate financial need, right? And the same for the bursaries, right? Uh, we're gonna waive the fee for those who can, can demonstrate uh, a real need, a uh, real financial need for that. We can discuss that this later in the Q&A if you have more questions. Now, very briefly, the content, I, I think this is the, the first time that we show it. Soon we're going to show this on the website, but this is the tentative uh, content for this, for this online iteration. Uh, we're going to have uh, over the at least seven to eight sessions. Um, and as you can see, we have one uh, on digital research design and the project life cycle with Dr. Alexander, who is here present, who is also the director of learning. Uh, she can talk about that later on. Uh, we also going to have uh, web scraping for cultural heritage projects with Hugh Jones from the, the Cambridge uh, Library. Uh, we're going to have uh, a workshop on 3D digitization um, with Jendai and Adul, those um, those modules, those sorry, those workshops, uh, or that that workshop has two sessions with them. It's about uh, using very very simple means to 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 come up with some three digitization of of objects and spaces, 
and then how to refine some of that using using uh, uh, some some software, uh, particularly Blender. Uh, probably Anne can can tell us a little bit more about it too. We're going to have another session uh, on digital archives and communities in crisis. This is going to be kind of a, a joint uh, taught session by Anne Alexander and Andy Corrigan, also from from uh, Cambridge Library, and. Uh, and can tell us more about the two, but uh, uh, we believe that this is going to be very beneficial for those who are doing some some kind of archiving work or digitization work um, under kind of very difficult conditions, can be uh, physical threats or um, even budgetary uh, threats as well. So uh, I think we it, that, that's going to be a, a very interesting session. We're going to have a public event that is going to be curated by um, one of our working groups. Uh, is the Anticolonial Archives Working Group that is going to have a public event. So that's, uh, as the name you know, uh, refers to it, it's, uh, it's, it's a session that is open to, to all, not just to students, but of course, the students uh, of the data school are uh, invited to, to come, right? Um, continuing, we have the workshop, which well, is the second part of the workshop. And we're going to have also another session with Anne on visualizing cultural heritage, heritage data, session of visualization, really. Um, and a keynote with Leo Impet, who is the convener of our Enfield program at Digital Humanities. He's going to, he's going to have a, a, a keynote on AI and cultural heritage uh, collections. We believe that his, uh, his uh, expertise, his uh, technical uh, knowledge is going to be uh, of great benefit for those who are going to try and and, and include some of these uh, tools, AI, in their own work for collections, right? Uh, you see some things there, and please, by any means, feel free to, to ask about uh, all the things about the content, but to explain a little bit more, the social space and the self-paced study, you know, the, social, the social space is, is meant to be um, a space, a virtual space where teachers and peers, students can you know, uh, talk and they ha they can interact, right? So we're going to have two two of those spaces. We hope that that you make the most of uh, of that virtual space. And self paced study is is we we're expecting you to to digest to play a little bit with some of the materials and tools that we're giving to you, right? So uh, it is it is good that you that you have that time to 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 take some of those things in. Right? So that's kind of a, a brief presentation of the content. Also, you know, this is what what, what the, the data school will, will offer to you is 14 hours of effective uh, live sessions of the spread over one week and a half between six, the 6th and the 14th of November. Opportunities for interactions with teachers and participants. We believe in horizontal uh, participatory education. So that's very, very important. You're going to learn from teachers, but you're also going to learn from uh, people who are doing very, very interesting work out there. So uh, that's going to be a big part of, of the data school too. Materials, tutorials, resources are going to be accessible online, um, which is, is going to be part of uh, the virtual learning environment that, that we use uh, in Cambridge. But you're going to, have, you're going to have access to, to all of that, um, including several requirements um, as well. Uh, and all that is going to be available for you at least two weeks before the, the data school commences. And you're also going to have um, the possibility of um, having a troubleshooting session with uh, people from CDH in case you have any, any, any problems in installing something or you, you get an error doing something. So you're also going to get that. We know that uh, sometimes learning in a virtual environment, mainly in online, Education, as it is, uh, the model of the of this data school is a bit difficult. So, the troubleshooting session becomes uh, a very important part as well. And um, this is the the teaching team. I mean, you've heard about about all of them already. But you've got Anna Alexander, the director of learning, Leo Impet from the MPhil in digital humanities at CDH, Hugh Jones, who's the head of digital, the the uh, library unit. Uh, Andy Corrigan, also from the library, and Jendai and Adil, uh, Jendai Omowale and Adil Mian, whose um, whose workshop um, they, they they run a, a, 
uh, previous workshop uh, for us, and we thought it was very successful. It's going to be adapted in a way that is going to 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 appeal to those who are in, in cultural heritage institutions and are joining the data school. But the workshop was is is, is going to be very very useful. So we are delighted to to have them on board for this iteration of the of the data school. And I think that I'm just to get hand over to to Anne right now to to describe a little bit of the modules and also to talk to us about a perfect application if there is such a thing. So Anne. Um, okay, thank you very much, Irving, and um, it's nice to see everyone virtually on the session today. Um, so I just wanted to add a little bit extra in terms of um, some of the content of the modules that I'm teaching and to explain a bit about how they fit together. So one of the things that we try to do in the data schools is give people a sense of what's good practice in putting together a digital research project or a digital archives and collections based project, because there are common foundations really that you need to think about when you're structuring a project um, in terms of how do you design the project, where do you get your data from, what do you do to transform your data, how will you analyse and present it, what will you do with your data afterwards. And there are also threaded through this whole thing is the question of how you can do this in an ethical and sustainable way. Um, so the first session that I, I do for kicking off the data school helps to set up a framework for that and provide some opportunities for people to discuss their existing experiences in working with in a data intensive environment um, where they have to manage data and, uh, and, and then work with it, transform it and, and present it. Um, as you'll see, there is a, a kind of flow throughout the, the, the course of the week where we start off with the research design questions and then we're getting on to the to the modules that will be about presenting the data for or communicating with your data like the visualization module that i run towards the end of it and embedded in that are also other some of the other thematic modules this i should say this doesn't mean that you have to apply with a specific project in mind it may be that you want to learn the general principles or you're going thinking about exploring perhaps a collection that you're, you're you know in the institution where you work um, or you have an idea for something that's fairly incipient and you want to get some um, you know an experience of uh, of how to design this kind of project so please don't feel that you have to come with a with a ready worked out idea and in fact quite a lot of people who attend the data school are still at a fairly early stage in conceptualizing a, um, a, 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 a digital project of their own um, in terms of the, there are some other elements where we'll be looking at, um, so for example, the session that we're running on digital archives and communities in crisis, will put some of the, the principles that we've explained about how you might uh, create a digital research project or you might set about building a, a, a new digital archive into a context where might, you might be working in a low resource environment, or you might be working under constraints, for example, in the aftermath of a natural disaster, and you're engaged in a community archiving project, or you might be working with communities that are uh, oppressed or marginalized, uh, maybe have limited access to state resources or public funds, or are working in an environment where um, you know, they face perhaps active hostility from, uh, uh, from the state. Um, so think about, the purpose of archives and the practice of digital archiving in a in a in a critical way through this through through this lens um and it, that will feed in a little bit to some of the themes that we're likely to discuss in the um uh, in the public event of the anti-colonial archives working group um we'll be unveiling a bit more about that uh in um uh, in the next few weeks hopefully um jendai Mawali and adil mian's workshop uh, also has some similar themes because they have experience in teaching um, digitize it, 3D digitization um, in a workshop that was aimed at global majority, uh, people of, of global majority heritage, um, learning digitization methods and, and broadening access to what are often quite resource intensive and uh, expensive methods to use. So it will, the 3D digitization project that they will show you how to build involves you, you require a mobile phone camera you require um, access to software that is open source and free to and free to download 
uh, and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of um, the perfect application, um, there isn't really a perfect application, um, but the kinds of things that we're looking for is that we would like you to tell us, um, firstly, to show that you, why it is you feel that the content that we're offering in the school um, fits to fits with your needs, what you will get out of it uh, in, individually, how it fits with how you want to develop your career or your skills, uh, how it fits with the project that you're in, you're engaged with. Um, so the more detail you can put in on this, uh, uh, on this, the better. We can't second guess if you write a very short application. It's there is a word limit, obviously, um, but you know the more that you uh, generally applications um, do badly if people don't write very much because we can't tell whether you've actually worked out that there is a proper fit between your needs and uh, what we're offering in the in in the data school. Um, other things that we are interested in seeing in applications, as Irving mentioned, um, this is not a general digital humanities um, uh, training uh, training school. It's actually specifically for people who have an engagement with the cultural heritage sector. Now that doesn't have to be with a paid role or a formal role with a cultural heritage institution. It be, could could be because uh, you know you're involved. It's a place where you want to work, and you you know you can demonstrate that you're seriously uh, taking your career in that direction. Or you could have a volunteer role. You could be part of an unfunded or community project, and so on uh, uh, and so forth. Um, it's so therefore, if you are a researcher or a postgraduate student, for example, or an undergraduate student, we're more likely to prioritise your application if you show this active engagement with the sector. Um, so rather than concentrating on you know, something that has more more purely research or academic um, goals in mind. Uh, if you have a, a partnership with a museum or with a community heritage project uh, or something like that, and you can tell us about it in your application, that will definitely, uh, definitely help your your case. Um, in terms of um, the other the other things that we are likely to prioritize is if you can tell us about how uh, other people in your wider networks might benefit from you attending the school. This is particularly if you are applying for a concession place or a bursary place. If you, for example, are applying as part of a project, um, you know, where you would be able to pass on the skills that you've learned to other people, or you're from a community, from a, a, a region where there's very few people have this, have access to this kind of training. This is something that will help, um, help us make a decision in terms of, uh, and we and we will prioritise applications that can demonstrate this. Um, the general overview in terms of application writing is, is as I said, um, it's better to write more than 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 less, um, and that most of the applications that we, uh, you know, find hard to include are ones that are very short. Um, so the 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 more detail you can put in, the the the, the better. Um, I think I'll stop there because we've got time for questions. And so please come back if there's anything else you want to know. Thank you, Anne. A few more things about the, thank you. Uh, I can say a few more things about the, uh, just some brief technical requirements. Of course, you need a really, a, a good internet connection for video calls. Uh, you need a laptop or desktop to, to connect. These are just, uh, some of the, the 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 software requirements that you that you you'll need, of course, Zoom for for the calls. Uh, we're gonna use Blender and Meshroom as well, and more to be confirmed. You're gonna you're gonna get the the full list of of, of software requirements once you you you're enrolled, and there are, I mean, at least two weeks before the data school starts. And just important dates, of course, right for for this cultural heritage data school. Uh, the deadline for applications is 1st October 2023, and um, the date of school itself on the 6th to the 14th of November, right? So in the middle, you will have, get access to the virtual learning environment. You get access to um, also the, um, the full list of software, uh, and, you know, you can interact uh, already as well with other, with other students uh, around those dates. So we... We, we, we wait or we expect, we hope that you, uh, that you apply, that you found this, this information uh, session useful. 
And yeah, we wait for, for your applications.